Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh my gosh, what do I do, what do I do? I don't have an anxiety problem. Really, I don't. Whenever there's a full moon, I often wish I wasn't constipated. Sometimes I think about death, then I eat a taco and forget all about it. <laughs> I've never pranked called an old guy. If I had, I'd say, I'm eating a sandwich, and then hang up. There was this guy that fetishized Asian women, so spreading out my legs, I said, come hither. He said, no, and I said, oh. If I had a dollar for every time someone says orange, I just have a dollar. <laughs> cottage cheese doesn't taste like a cottage made of cheese. Are you Korean? No, I'm Canadian. Once I tried putting my frown upside down into a smile, but instead I still looked sad. The only difference was that I was frowning because I got a head rush. Humans are mold, while Earth is the bread, which means Earth will end up in the garbage disposal because moldy bread is disgusting. I learned all that from some guy named Joe Rogan, or actually my friend did and told me what, Joe, what that Joe Rogan guy said. I forget why he told me that. I think he was trying to kick me out of his house. Gary Busey, dressed in drag, flaunting his boobs, isn't recommended for the faint of heart. I don't have anxiety issues. I tried having an imaginary friend once. It didn't work out because I knew she wasn't real. I wish I had a child so that I can give them this piece of advice. If you ever go in a bar and approach someone with what? is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow and that someone doesn't even respond, don't waste your time with that person because they're not worth it. I want to star in a romantic comedy with Ryan Gosling. It'll be 20 minutes long, just me and Ryan Gosling eating burritos while watching TV. The film ends with me saying, wow, this show is so sexist, and with him immediately responding with, yes, it is. <laughs> I used to think weed makes you laugh and say stupid stuff, but once I tried it, I didn't feel anything because I was smoking it wrong. The day I first used a tampon was the day I finally understood where babies come from. Chipotle doesn't rhyme with anything. I'm, I'm too scared to watch tentacle porn solely because I'm afraid I end up getting hungry and then get inspired in making a new genre, tentacle snuff porn. I think I'm hot sexual. I'm either attracted to men or I'm not attracted to men. And in both of those scenarios, I'm always wearing a hat. I remember, I remember when I first listened to Taylor Swift sing, I almost died of blood loss from my ears. A Korean lady calls me. First thing she asks, is this a Catholic church? She definitely dialed the wrong number. Wait, my friend still hasn't paid me back for the sake I split with him. What a jerk. There's this one James Joyce novel I read, but can't remember the title. It's about a guy who was brought up in a very conservative Christian upbringing. He's sexually frustrated and so awkward. Wait, that's my life. Is James Joyce actually the divine writer of my life? I don't have anxiety issues, honestly. Chefs and bathroom grime rings, awkward hair clusters tangled on the edges of bath mats, sink drains, tub spouts. My roommates are practicing to go pro and sucky. <laughs> My roommates are some of the more horribly larval, utterly self absorbed, filthy little assholes, reeking <laughs> with their own self importance as. They destroy anything they come in contact with. <laughs> My roommates claim righteousness, fervently hiking paths, saving the planet, one underprivileged grad student at a time, <laughs> pretending to compost by not taking out the trash, <laughs> <laughs> or leaving greasy, stinking garbage in my pans on the stove all week. My roommates love to randomly throw my stuff away. 
love to loudly vent accusations about filth-covered second-hand soap dispensers more broken than their logic, when not having painful, stupid discussions about the philosophical ramifications of the popularly vapid array of shallow prototypes cluttering the falsely lit world of the 90s TV show Friends. <laughs> My roommates are vindictive fart faces, practicing to become masters of shittiness <laughs> and random petty vandalism. My roommates are working on getting their diplomas and sucking the joy from already cold and lonely days, apprenticing in the classical arts of fine snubbery and occasional mental thuggery. Right now, my roommates are sleeping, not even understanding the gauge or scale of their blundering error. Negative enzymes. Your face is a hole in the ground, and I'm not stepping in it, nor am I filling it with water or soil or anything like that. I shall pay it no attention more. The yelling, yeah, it's a little hard to take seriously, but the sentiments are sincere, sincere and exhausted. We both know we're good at stripping other people's wires. What new do we gain by reenacting it? Your mother is gone. Soon, mine will be too. One less person who, beyond having the bandwidth, actually cares whether we as fucked up, amazingly creative people will actually do better than just survive beyond not stabbing ourselves with knives, causing our own bodily distress with all the lies we tell in the sound of whispers every minute of all the time. Your eyes didn't show any kind of surprise. Your gestures seemed slow and rehearsed, sadly tired. So familiar, so nostalgic, so hungry for this damaged routine. I fell for it, just like with my mother. Raised my temper and then my voice, or was it the other order? Your will is your own, as mine is mine. Kicking holes in the speakers, don't make them louder. Everything dying away from you, from us. Not really dying but doing a life-saving job of pretending, withering, then escaping into rest, into a world that shines with light and acceptance, with, that shares loves and makes friends with our reality more like a martial arts movie, all bursts of air and violent shifting, gestures honed, slices rendered, economical with minimal exertion, causing damage Sure, there's history, a traceable lineage of secret societies, carefully killing people under the guise of refined art. No more than your face empty where a hole used to be. Papa's hands. Hands like hard wooden saddles, weather worn and tanned, a red near Cordovan, nearer to the sunset lit red cliffs, ancient river rocks, now standing alone. Where he grew up, where he was a boy, old, old Mexican man selling the ropes and telling stories of getting robbed by Billy the Kid. Hands like massive slabs of dense muscle, scarred and scabbed, too big for most things, but nimble and agile in ways that seemed impossible. Hands like sandpaper infused with tiny shards of coral, but warm and kind to a tiny person or animal, metal part, fragile, careful tools to be used in a thousand varied ways, usually in the oil-scented garage, workshop, spotlessly clean and cluttered with parts and manuals, bulbs and screwdrivers, needle-nose pliers and magnifying glasses, hands that had already handled things, too big for just one man, under the unrelenting sky of New Mexico alone, 
with the dogs and the fear-filled eyes of several hundred heads of cattle. It was free. Neon lights hum in hues of green and blue. Smoke disperses over huddles of sweaty bodies as they twist and shake to pulsating sounds of electric thundering drums over and over. My legs go weak. Blisters start popping beneath my feet. It's almost 3 a.m. in the morning, and I'm the only one in this club that wants to go home. Damn it, I should have had, just had that ecstasy earlier. It was free ecstasy, too. So.